what we're going to do then is, and I'll leave, I'll leave the first part up. What we're going to do then is we're going to look at, the first thing to do is look at um, some of the axioms, right? And I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to go through the most, and I'm not going to give you the historical background on it because I don't think it's, it's important. Um, I'm going to give you the axiom, which is known as the distribution uh, axiom, right? And the distribution axiom uh, is, is pretty basic. Uh, first, I'll, I'll, I'll write it out, and then I'll explain, uh, I'll actually write out the words, what it means. So, we know that this means necessary, right? So, if it is necessary that, because we, we, we realize that it is necessary that, right? So, if it is necessary that if P, then Q, right? Simple. We know that means if P, then Q. And to have the, the operator square on the outside of this is easy, right? So, the, this is easy to, to, to say, right? This means if P, then Q. So let's write that down, right? This means if P, then Q, right? So all we have to do now then is to add this, right? If it is necessary, right? If it is necessary, so we write if it is C E S S A R. So if it is necessary that if P, then Q, Right? If it is necessary that if P, then Q, then what? Then we have to make a, di and sorry, I didn't put this up, I thought I did. This is known as the distribution, D-I-S-T-R-I-B-U, distribution, A-X-I-O-M. Right, so this is one of the, uh, sort of the foundational axioms in modal logic, right? So, if it is necessary that if P, then Q, then... And all I do now is I just distribute this, this square, right? I distribute the necessity. So the P gets a, uh, a necessary claim and the Q gets a necessary claim. Very, very basic, right? It doesn't need to be all that complicated. So then I just say, well, then necessarily P, right? Then necessarily P. So if necessarily P, then necessarily Q. And that's it. Right? So now we've learned the distribution axiom. So if it is necessary that if P then Q, then, then what does it say? Then if, because remember if then, if, if P then Q, then if necessarily P, because it has the necessary there, then if, N-E-C-E-S-S-A-R-I-L-Y, then if necessarily P, then N-E-C-E. Necessarily Q. So this is how I would word this statement. This is how I would read the statement. So if you're trying to read modal logic, another thing is sometimes you look in books and all you see is this, the squares and the arrows and the P's and so on and so forth, and it doesn't make any sense with just squares and arrows and P's. Um, and one of the things I did way back when I was learning uh, modal logic is to make sure that I understood how to sound it out, how to say what I was reading. I think that's a, it's a very intro way of learning modal logic. But I think once you know how to say the symbols, then you can make more sense of it. Because then, then, it, then the logic starts to sound right, uh, at least for me. And I think this is a great way to introduce the idea. So this is read, if it is necessary um, that if P then Q, then if necessarily P, then necessarily Q. And this is one of the, the foundational axioms of modal logic, and it is known as the um, distribution axiom. All right, so the next thing that I can do in a discussion of modal logic is I can look at some substitutions, right? I can look at how I can substitute things, right? What can I, and, I, and I'll also give uh, examples of, of the following, right? Um, imagine that I wanted to make sense of, we'll begin with uh, necessarily P, right? So imagine I want to begin with necessarily P. How do I make sense of, of this claim, right? Well, first of all, if I'm looking for this relationship between, and I'm, I'm looking for substitution, I'm trying to say that these things are interchangeable, we already know from our discussion on symbolic logic that the symbol we're going to use um, for this substitution is the biconditional, right? So already we recognize how to read this, right? This is read if... Well, there's two ways to read this, right? You can read this if, 
N-E-C-E-S-S-A-R-I. The necessarily P, or you can read this if P is necessary. It doesn't really matter. Um, me, I like to keep it simple, so I say if P is necessary, but I mean technically you can read it if necessarily P. Okay. So I'll, we'll go with this, right? If P is necessarily, is necessary, if P is necessary, now we know that this is red, the biconditional is red, if and only if, so if P is necessary, or you can put P is necessary, we'll go with the simpler, P is necessary, if and only if what? Well, now we need to make sense of this, right? I'm trying to substitute. Well, P would be necessary under what uh, conditions? I might say that P is necessary if and only if, well, it is possible, it is not possible, it is not possible that P does not exist, right? So the following would be read, uh, and I'll write this out. Let me write it out so I don't confuse you. Right? So here's the claim. This is my first claim. And it would be read, um, let's keep it simple. P is, and you see, P is necessary if and only if. Also, if and only if can be um, itself um, sort of consolidated to IFF, right? So in the future, in this discussion, if I write if and only if, I'm not going to write out if and only if. I'll just write IFF. It means the same. If and only if, IFF, it means the same. So P is necessary if and only if. How does this write, right? It is not possible, right? It is not. The negation is a symbol. It is not a possibility. It is not possible if and only if. It is not possible. that not P is the case, right? That not P is the case. Now let's think about that. This is red. Um, P is necessary if and only if it is not possible that not P is the case. Now think about it. It is not possible that not P is the case. We're talking about necessity, right? We're talking about something being necessary. This thing is necessary if and only if it's the case that it is basically impossible to say that this thing does not exist. Think about that, right? And I know it might seem a little, and I'm trying to keep it simple, right? If I'm talking about th this thing having to exist, right? This thing having to have some type of structure or some type of form, and I make the claim that um, this thing is necessary if and only if, Basically, a simple way of saying this, another simple way of saying this, is that its, it's non-existence is not possible. If something's non-existence is not possible, then it, then it necessarily exists, right? Um, so, I, unfortunately, that's as easy as I can make it, right? I know it seems a little, a little hokey, but um, the only claim that's being made here is that if um, we are talking about the necessary existence of something, then we have to look at the, the claim that its non-existence is not possible, right? It's not, that's a, probably a better way of looking, right? It's non-existence, the non-existence of this thing is not possible. And that, that, that should be clear.